the idea of your podcast and helping people as they're up and like, hopefully I'll be able to share some things that are like mistakes that I made that I definitely learned things from. Um, and hopefully it helps. And this sounds like what you want to do. And that will just grow the community. Yeah. And I have a friend who, uh, gripped on passage and his name is uh, Edward and Shilka, I think is how you pronounce it. He's not a close friend, uh-huh. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's a friend. He's a friend that I met through production. So like he, um, he loves the song Danny boy, which is really weird, but also very endearing. Yeah. Like you can hear him on set like, Oh, Danny boy. <laughs> the pi-. Like, Every time I've worked with him. Yeah. But he's like the, he's just such a generally, genuinely nice person. Anyway, he had a filmmaker friend post this thing on YouTube and it was an hour long movie that he made by himself. And it was really good. It was like a horror film. And what he put in the beginning of the video was really captivating to me. He was like, hey, look, even if you're just going to like watch this movie later or whatever, like, please like it. Because most likely filmmakers are watching this. And if you like it, you know, it helps my uh, and if you comment on the video, it like helps people see it like it helps the algorithm like and I just loved his um, honestness in that honesty in that. Yeah. And I loved his, like he said after that, he goes, you know, because what does it hurt you? If you help me, it doesn't hurt you at all. But right. we kind of like think that I think in the back of our minds, we think that it does hurt us. And we think that, Oh, well, if I game the system for this guy, then where's my, where's my bit? Come yeah, from? man. I used to have that. Cause I remember, I remember back when I was in, uh, when I was in community college and I was, I was working, um, I was working as in their like motion picture television department. It was actually, sorry, it most to the motion picture television department was the sort of academic department. And then there was like a multimedia department that did like videos for the school. I worked in the multimedia department and the teacher from the motion picture and animation department. Um, he said he like made a film or something. It, it might've just been a short, I don't remember, but it was a short. And I remember like, my buddy who I worked with was like, Hey, like this guy, this teacher, like he made a short and I'm like, ah, like my attitude was basically fuck him. You know what I mean? Like that's was my attitude. You know, mm-hmm. he was like, what, what, like, what are you talking about? Like someone from here, like made something. But I think as, as artists, but also as this is such a competitive space that I think we sometimes naturally want to go, well, screw that guy. I need to be mm-hmm. better than all these people. And so I can't help them. But then the problem is that, we don't really have, as far as I understand it, because I'm also very, I'm very insular. I'm like very, um, you know, I don't, I don't really like, I don't go to a lot of um, like networking events or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like I, it's, it's very difficult to, for me to meet new people, which is sad. You know, I'm just, I'm just very like introverted. No, that's and so, and so, and so, you know, the problem is like film is this super collaborative process like you need a team of people yes and there are people out there that want to help that want to be a part of something and insofar that there might be some community out there of filmmakers like local filmmakers i i don't know i'm not in it you know and so and that was the thing that i i one of the reasons i want to talk to you and that's something that isaac said so he was like you know seth's got a a lot of people in his network which i was like damn that's such a smart move because i don't have anything like that like i was just very lucky that through Garrett, I met you. Yeah. And then like that whole thing happened where you shot my short and it was like this incredible experience. And Nicholas and I always said like, man, we need to get more involved and like meet more people. <laughs> Cause yeah. that was just amazing. But I, I, t- I totally know what you mean. Yeah. And I, I mean, it's something I wore with, with myself too. And I think just this idea of, well, I think for me, it's more of an imposter syndrome and there's inad- that too, like inadequacy. Like I feel like, um, I often talk about with my filmmaking friends that like I have, Andrew Block, I love you, Andrew. Um, but Andrew is always in the back of my head, and he's like really an amazing DP gaffer. And I'm always like worried that my uh, film gear isn't good enough. Mm. Um, and then so sometimes when I'm in the B and H shopping cart, I have Andrew in the back of my mind, <laughs> and I feel like like he's he, like he's like looking he's, over your shoulder, going, yeah. "Oh, what are you doing?" Yeah. What do you do? But Andrew in real life would never do that because he's awesome and he's super kind. But like, I don't, I guess for me, it's like, well, what kind of world do we want to live in? And do I want to live in a world and help build a world where we're just selfish and just like worried about number one? And I'm not really interested in that. Like we've just, you know, we've seen the fallout of that, you know, yesterday. Um, And Mm -hmm. I mean, 
so I don't know when you're going to air this, but like tragedies happen all the time yep. and, and they happen because people are selfish and they, those tragedies can be big and they can be small. And if I can like help someone in like a small way, then, because I don't know what, how do I can help someone in a big way. Right. Um, but like, you know, small steps lead to big places. And as much as I say like, oh, I'm, I'm so introverted, like, and whatever I have an opportunity to help someone, I want to do it and I love doing it. Awesome. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I just feel like I've not, I've not made the proper effort. I feel to like really understand what the Chicago like filmmaking community is. Dude, I, I, I just wanted to dispel any myth that I actually understand that. Well, so, so, so how did you get your <laughs> network? Cause you have a pretty big network. I feel like. I, I think it's just because like, I love people and I just like, don't care if they help me. So right now I'm kind of putting on this, like, I feel like if someone was never introduced me to me before, they would be like, oh, this person seems like he, he's just talking about giving a lot. Well, I was like a total douchebag to that first production company guy. His name was David. And I just remember like one time he wanted me to like run cables for him, uh, land cat five cables. Yep. So my office could be connected to the internet, which was across the hall. And I was like, I'm a DP. I don't do that. And, um, <laughs> Like, that's what you hired me for. Like, I'm an, I do editing. Like, and now when I have kids that come work with me, I like give them advice, like be the janitor, like yep. serve other people, find ways to just, and this is true no matter where you're at. Like, just if you want to learn how to network with people or whatever, the, the key is simple. It's just like, find out how you can help them. Don't even make it about yourself or think about how is this going to end up benefiting me somehow? Because first of all, people can tell if, if I call you and I'm like, hey, guess what? I, I really want to make your life better um, because I'm selling this product and it's an MLM product. And guess what? It's going to make your life better. And it's also going to make my life better. Well, then I don't really want your stupid product, you know? Right, right. Um, but if you can just like get it in your mind that like the world and your sphere of influence would be a better place because you selfless, selflessly help people, then because now I, I can say that because of experience of looking back and being like, dude, I feel like such a jerk. Cannot believe I didn't just run that guy's cat five cable. He was giving me all this like opportunity and was like literally investing in me. And I, I was prideful. You Did know? you get fired from that job? No, I didn't get fired. Oh, okay. Um, I, and things are cool now. Or? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. Like I, I love him and he sold his company to a guy named Brian Oster and Brian runs a company called OC creative. It used to be called OC image works. After I stopped working at the, OC image works production company. I just really felt like led to start my own company. And in fact, I'll just tell you the story. So, um, I, I was like feeling like I ought to quit. And again, I wasn't always, I guess I wasn't a jerk to him the whole time. And there was times while I still worked for him for David, I was like, David, I'm sorry. I treated you poorly. Please forgive me. You know, like I don't want to treat you like this night. And, and we, our relationship really did turn around and his son, um, is an LA person he went to fsu his name is brian barrow and he's an amazing filmmaker and that's I learned, awesome yeah and he would come out for like our bigger shoots and then like i learned a ton from him um so what's he doing now he's uh, i think he's like a colorist he helped us with awesome. color and passage he like was a i asked if he would consult you know and he gave us some good advice i mean it's all just like hey let's get coffee hey let's like i want to know you more you know like yeah, yeah. and then i try and talk to people because like people are interesting and um, I want to know more th about them than just like their filmmaking career. Like, yeah, I've like gotten coffee with people and we've gone into like deep conversations about, you know, issues they have in their family or like, you know, we've talked about stuff that's like real, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's just how life should be. I, I kind of hate when I'm working in the corporate world and I'm working for someone that doesn't, is just not interested in getting to know you past the role that you're in. Right. And if I think of people as like little pawns that I can kind of move around so I can get to my end game, 